Good morning, my friends. Welcome back to the vlog. So today has been a crazy morning. I will just tell you that. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice a little bit. Over the weekend, I did experience some coughing and tightness in the chest. But I have been assured that I do not have you know what because I have no other symptoms, no fevers, nothing else. Um, and we have had a lot of weather change, dust, and other things happening in Arizona. So I've been assured by my doctor and nurse friends that I am fine. I do not have the you know what, that I just have some really bad allergies. So I am in my classroom today and it is Monday. It is 825. I have about 25 minutes until my first Google Meet, but I thought that I would try to do a week in the life of a teacher online vlog because I have tried to vlog so many times in the last couple of weeks, like a day in the life, and I just feel like my days look exactly the same that I'm running out of things to tell you guys that are new. So um, this morning I, um, I got to school a little bit late. Um, I had two meetings. I had a red meeting, which is a review of existing data. So we are gonna be able to test a child. So we were trying to review the data to make sure that the student was el eligible for testing. They are, so that's great news. And then I had a PD path meeting where I was discussing with my instructional assistant um, the path that I'm gonna be taking for PD. Um, and so the path that I'm gonna be taking is PBL and scientific topics. So basically throughout the next school year, I will be um, attending different professional developments and trainings that are themed around uh, project-based learning or science, and then I just document it, um, provide evidence that I was there, provide evidence that I'm using it in my classroom, things like that. So that was really fun and exciting. Uh, right now, I am working on my Nearpod for my Google Meets today. I got my students started on Studies Weekly. If you do not know what Studies Weekly is, it is basically either a science or social studies. They used to have both. I don't know if they have both anymore. But it is the resource slash curriculum that my school has adopted for the social studies teachers. It's very cool. It's got different articles, videos to watch, questions to answer, and it's kind of like a point system so the students can earn coins as they answer questions. If they answer them right, they get more coins. Um, and so it is motivating for kids. Um, but that is our social studies curriculum and so last week during my google meets i tried to get all my students logged into studies weekly so they all had an had an opportunity to get logged in so i'm hoping fingers crossed that today they all got logged in and so i created just a little four slide near pod just to check for understanding to check and see who actually got logged in and to see if anyone has copied my notes yet because my students are expected to watch my videos do my assignments before or at least start my assignments before they see me during Google Meet because during Google Meet I like to check for understanding using Nearpod. So I just created a quick little Nearpod. I'll show it to you guys. Okay so I just pulled information straight from Studies Weekly so this is kind of what it looks like. They read the article. There's a little feature where they can have it read to them and they can make it slower or faster. So I really just pulled information from this article piece right here to create my Nearpod. So the first question is, geography is a study of what? So this is a poll um, to see what kids remember. So if they read this, it will say geography is the study of Earth and its people. So they should be choosing A. So this is just a poll. It doesn't really have like a right or wrong. It's just to see like overall. Um, so I put rocks, layers of Earth, and landforms, which... <laughs> They're all part of the geosphere, so that's going to confuse them, hopefully. I really want them to have paid attention, so we'll see. Um, this isn't graded, by the way. It's all for participation, but then this is a, a fill-in-the-blanks opportunity, so the kids would um, click and drag the words in. This is just a quick check for understanding. I'm trying to get some engagement in my Nearpods. And then, um, what are the five themes of geography? Just enter one that you can remember. So as the kids enter them in, they pop up. I'm just gonna put you. And then it pops up on the screen. So as the kids type in their answers, they show up. And then the last slide is another poll. So I wanted to know, did you log into Studies Weekly this morning? This one is supposed to be the very first slide, so I'm gonna have to go in and edit that. But, oh yeah, I just click and drag it. So now, 
Um, that is my little quick check for understand using Nearpod. I love Nearpod. Um, Nearpod is a really cool um, resource if your school has purchased it for you. I think there is a free version, but um, I think that my version that I have is the smallest or it might even be the free one um, because I can only I only have so much capacity. I can, I can only store so many presentations in here before I have to delete them. So I think that mine is the free version. So you should be able to log in there and at least try it out and see if you like it. <clears throat> but I'm gonna use that today. I've been using it for quick checks, so I'm not really that concerned about saving them. I would like to have more capacity, but it is what it is, I'm using it as I can. Also, if you create your Nearpod assignments in Google Slides, you can save them as a Google Slide and then when you're ready to use them in Nearpod, just add the activities in Nearpod and then you have it saved in Google Slides. Anyways, so I really want to do a classroom tour video, but I'm waiting for a couple of things to arrive that I have ordered or that I have in collaboration with a couple of companies. One is called FlexiSpot. I'm waiting for something very specific from them before I wanna do my room tour because my room tour is going to be very like virtual teaching heavy because that's just the environment that I'm in right now. Um, nothing's really gonna change other than like where my teaching station is. Also, if you've watched online or on, sorry, Instagram, um, they did take our smart boards down as well as our projectors and they are installing giant television screens So I'm sort of waiting until that comes because that will change how everything kind of operates um, Like my desk space doesn't have to be like it is at, after that so I might like turn my desk to face the window and then that way I have all of this floor space available especially for when we come back to school if I do have to distance my students and their desks that is going to be very effective and then also my virtual teaching station what I'd like to do is face the TV have my Google Meet station right here facing the TV so the kids would have this view behind me but I want to use the TV as a monitor so that I can see all of my kids at once so I would project my Google Meet onto the television and then use that as my monitor instead of the computer screen, which I think is really cool. Also, <laughs> this is so cool. So we got our new district devices on Thursday last week. They are the latest and greatest Lenovo Education Series ThinkPads, which these are cool. I put my little frizzle sticker on it. This is from Etsy. But what I love about these is that um, the reason they're putting the television screens in here is because these can project to them. No problemo. But they've also given us these really stellar document cameras to use with our Lenovo's. So I'm pretty stoked about this. Um, I'm gonna have to go set it up in front and then show you guys. Looks like this. But um, I think I'm gonna go, like I said, I think I'm gonna go set it up up front and then show you guys how it works. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is what the document camera looks like when it is all set up. It does fold out and um, it can be adjusted. So it looks like this. At first glance, it's like, what the heck is that supposed to be or what's it supposed to do? But let me show you the magic. Okay, so the computer itself has a camera down underneath. You just set it on the document camera and it projects everything underneath. Now, the only thing I don't like about this setup is the fact that this is under here, but you can adjust it. But I don't like how like this thing is kind of in the way uh, because everything that I put on there will have to either rest on top of that thing or I'll have to like project from down below if you guys catch my drift. Um, 
but I still think it's really cool. I mean, this is like definitely the latest and greatest. And then, like I said, this will project directly to my television screen. So potentially I can take this anywhere I want to. Like I can put it on a student's desk and a student can project their work. Um, I don't have to be like at a teaching station. I could potentially teach from like any desk in the room, any table in the room, any surface in the room. And then we also have the stylus pen. So we also have the stylus pen, which you can use to um, write with, which I'm gonna have to learn where all of the tools are. Um, oh, here we go. Let's just say I wanna use the red one. I can like draw right on the screen. Obviously this is messy because I need to configure the, the pen and figure out all the settings and all that. Um, you can screenshot and then save it. Basically the coolest stuff ever. <laughs> I need to always remember to put that back where it goes. So yeah, that is my new technology. So I'm actually getting ready to begin my Google Meet. I've got 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my Google Meet session. I like to be the first one in there because then I have control over muting and kicking people out, which I've never had to kick a student out, but unfortunately, that does have to happen. It will happen, um, but I will be the one in charge of that. So I'm actually starting my Google Meet right now, so I'm gonna put you guys down, and I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. See, 10 minutes early, the kids are already here trying to get in, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna get started with that, and then I'll check in with you guys in a minute. Okay, so my first Google Meet is done. Super exciting. Um, I wanted to stop real quick and show you guys my outfit of the day because I know that you guys love seeing these and you like um, knowing where everything is from. So I'm gonna just flip you guys around. So I am wearing this like dress from Target. It's like a long, I love dresses that cover my knees because I have really thick knees. Um, it's one of the pet peeves I have about my body. But um, I like anything that will cover my knee. So this dress is from Target. It's an extra small, which I don't usually wear extra small. I usually wear mediums. But I wanted it to fit nice and tight on the top because I wanted to wear this underneath t-shirts so I could just tie them up. I thought it would be cute. Um, they did have a few different colors, so I might go back and grab a couple more colors. But I just paired it with this belt. This is super old. I think it came with a pair of shorts from like Kohl's or something. And then my shoes are also from Target. I wasn't going to get them, but because they're so chunky, they're actually very comfortable. And I don't usually wear heels to work, but they are very comfortable. And since I'm not really standing for most of the day, I thought that they would be fine. <laughs> and then I also got myself this Kendra Scott um, necklace for my birthday. I got it from that boutique that I love in Prescott called Fancy That, but it is just the plain white glitter one. And then my earrings are also from Fancy That. There are some really vintage buffalo coins and they are earrings. So I got that from that boutique as well. My glasses are from Glasses USA and they are linked down in my little like website shopping link down below. Um, they're all organized by photo. So if you find the picture of the glasses that you like, you can click on them and they will take you directly to the link and where to buy them. Okay, I'm out of breath because I've been running around. So what I think I wanna do right now, I have like two and a half hours before my next Google Meet. Um, before I start planning for next week, which is what I like to do on Mondays, is start planning what I'm gonna do in the next week. I think I'm gonna flip my desk around so that my face is facing the window because now that I don't have to worry about keeping my desk area like adaptable for any teacher since we have all the new technology I can flip the desk and now it will not be facing this way since I don't really sit at it during the day when I have students and since it's just me in here I'm gonna flip it to face the window so that I have more walking space in this vicinity of the room so I think I'm gonna do that right now and then I will get hard to work at planning for next week Let's 
Let's see if I can do this without knocking anything off of it. Okay, so I really like how this turned out. I have to clean off the desk and do some, you know, organizing. And then I think I might even turn my fridge to face this way and just move my little coffee bar sign. Hopefully it will not fall off if I mount it to the cinder block wall. Ooh, I'm out of breath. And then I think I'll probably keep this right where it is. I actually might just leave that the way it is because I don't really need it to be anything special. A ton of floor space so that if I do need to distance my desks, I will be able to do so and have a little bit more room. Okay, so I'm at my new desk space and this is my background, which I love. I love having this behind me. And I also love being able to look at the window or out the window. I do have my little fan here because it does get hot, but that's okay. I'm loving it. I love being able to look outside when I'm working inside. Okay, so now that I've moved all of my stuff around, I am going to work on beginning to plan and prep for next week. So I think I'm going to stick with social studies for two weeks. I just did two weeks of science. So I think I'm going to move into two weeks of social studies. This week we started studying the five themes of geography. And in the next weeks on Studies Weekly, they have us digging deeper into each one. And I think that this is like the perfect topic to be studying in social studies right now because we're online, because it is sort of more of a dry topic rather than like actual historical information, things like that. I think that this is like the perfect thing to be working on with the kids um, because it is very introductory. Like they need to be able to, you know, be able to find absolute up location. They need to be able to describe the human and physical character characteristics of a place before they can do all of the other skills in social studies that they need to be able to do. So this is kind of perfect. We have four weeks left of digital learning. Hopefully, <laughs> if we get to fall break and we still can't come back, which I doubt because two of the other districts in our area have opened and they're in school, um, I highly doubt we will be we will remain online, but as soon as the kids come back in, we will start learning more like application stuff, so more historical events, um, more civics, more you know economics, all the good stuff. So I'm gonna try to do like I'm gonna try to get the next four weeks like prepared for. So next week we'll do geography again and then we will continue with erosion and weathering. And I'm gonna stick with erosion and weathering for the next couple weeks and then I'm gonna give my kids an earth science assessment. I'm supposed to be done with earth science before the quarter is up, but you guys, there are so many things that I wanna do with earth science that are more like in person that I just don't wanna do them online and then they flop. So I'm going to push erosion as far as I can take it because I would really like to start doing demonstrations and stuff like that in my weekly videos. And that's gonna require a little bit more planning than what I've been doing. So, and I wanna have the kids able, like be able to do some projects at home, some project-based stuff. So I'm gonna start planning for next week. And then I, once I have a plan in place, I will stop and start grading for last week. And then tomorrow and the rest of the week, I will begin taping video lessons, planning assignments, things like that that need to be done but studies weekly makes it really easy because it's already done i just have to kind of film myself reading the article go through the questions and then have the kids answer them on their own so that's kind of simple i like to put my own little twist on stuff as well so i'm gonna do that for a while and then i'll catch up with you guys later
Okay guys, so it is 11.24 and I just got finished grading one of my periods quizzes from last week and I am happy to report that more than 90% of them scored like proficient or above. So I think that would be, they only missed three would be um, <clears throat> an 80% and I only have like two who got any lower than that. I have a few that have not taken it yet because they're in the list of students who are not doing anything, which is unfortunate for them. Um, but I am getting ready to do my next Google Meet, so I'm gonna start shifting all of my stuff around. I um, had a visit from my kindergarten teacher friend, Patrick. Um, I wanna get him on my channel at some point. He is dating a friend of mine who works at my old school, so it's kind of like a built-in buddy. Um, and so he popped in to say hello. There are six kids down in the internet room, so I don't think I mentioned this on the vlog yet, but we have an internet opportunity zone here at our school, so kids can sign up to come here and use our internet, um, and it's sort of like a childcare situation, so if their parents are not home with them, they have nowhere else to go, they can come here for free and just sit in the internet opportunity area, which is not the place I would want to send my child because it is very um, boring. It looks like a testing room, but anyway, there are six kids down there. We're going to take them some candy. So I have some Jolly Ranchers and Dum Dums in my candy jar. So Patrick's gonna pop by at like 12.15 before I go live on Instagram for lunch. And we're just gonna take the kids some. <laughs> We're just gonna take the kids some candy just to kind of brighten up their day, say hello. And then I will come on live Instagram for lunch. If you guys didn't know, I do a live Instagram teachers, virtual teachers lounge a couple days a week. It's not every single day. I think it's usually Mondays, Wednesdays, and I think Fridays I have, no. So Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I think is when I'm able to do them. I do have a few meetings during my lunch hour, which I might try to see if I can change those because I feel like at lunchtime I should be able to stop working and eat <laughs> and take a break. But that's the plan for the day. Um, I feel good on grading. I have the two grades in for the week and I think I might add a third one just for funsies. And then um, I will be done grading for this week. If I can finish grading today from last week, that would be perfect because that means tomorrow and the rest of the week I can just plan for the next coming weeks, which will be great. If I could always grade on Mondays, then I would have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to prep, plan, film, do all that stuff. So I think I might try to do that every Monday. It's just nice to be able to come in and like kind of hang slowly jump into school and have everything graded, which is really nice because then I have all week to do makeups, late work, things like that. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk a little bit about late work and redo assignments. Let me just prop this thing up. Okay, so my teammates and I met last week to talk about late work and redos. So we were accepting late work and redos from pretty much anyone at any time, but we realized that it wasn't very fair to the students who were getting things turned in on time and doing them correctly the first time. So we decided to create a policy that is similar to what we would do in normal school. So we are giving students a seven day grace period to turn in assignments or redo assignments. So for example, if this week is week six, I will only be accept, accepting late work or resubmissions from last week, so week five. Anything prior to week five is officially, you cannot turn anything in late and you cannot redo anything from weeks four, three, two, and one. You will have to just accept the zero. But starting this week, students can turn in assignments from week five as long as they're turned in by week six Friday. So they can only be seven days old to be able to be graded. So technically the kids have like two weeks to do and submit and redo the assignments, which is nice because some kids, yeah, they had an internet issue or maybe they didn't have help on something. 
they do have technically like 14 days from the release date until that has to be turned in or resubmitted. So it is giving kids a little bit more time, but it is holding them accountable to where if they don't have it turned in by that 14th day, there's nothing we can do for them. It's just gonna have to be a zero. And we do not do extra credit in this district. We are not allowed to give extra credit. Um, now, if a student's on an IEP, that's kind of different, but we still feel like 14 days is a lot of time to be um, giving them to do these assignments and turn them in. I still do have quite a few students who are at a complete zero in the grade book for both science and social studies due to the fact that they're just not doing anything. Um, and they, I have called parents, I have emailed parents, and nothing is really changing. So that's kind of how this is working. I think I have like maybe two or three in each period. So about less than 10 students out of about 80 that aren't doing anything. So I think that's pretty good. They all come to my Google Meets, but they're not submitting assignments. So I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but like I said, I've done as much communication as I possibly can. And at this point, it's kind of the balls in their court. So that's kind of what we've done as far as like late work and redos, because we do want to let the kids have a chance to redo an assignment or a quiz, um, because we would do that in class. So we're gonna just keep this policy rolling and then when we get back to school, we will also have that policy in place. Um, seven day old assignments, 14 days to submit them. Um, and hopefully that will keep everybody accountable. So anyway, I'm gonna transfer all my stuff up to the front where I will be doing my Google Meets and I will see you guys after that. All right, my friends, so it is now 1.56. I am done with my Google Meets for the day. So at this point, I do have an hour between um, now and my office hours. I did order groceries to be picked up around two o'clock. So I am just going to pack up my stuff, run and grab my groceries real fast. I ordered the click list. So on my way home, I will just run and pick up groceries. Super convenient because the grocery store is within a few minutes of my house and so is the school. So. Um, technically it's not like on the way home but it is within like a five minute little stretch so I am gonna go home and grab or sorry go grab my groceries and then go home and be there for office hours so every day oh, sorry Monday Tuesday and Thursday I have office hours between 3 and 3 30 and those are for any students or parents who are struggling with anything who have questions about an assignment who have questions about online learning pretty much anything that they need um, I have office hour time for. So I do have to be in a live Google Meet. I just go in the same Google Meet code that I have been using for all day. So my same Google Meet code works for all meets of the day. Um, and so I just go in and I sit there and some days I have nobody and some days I have kids that just wanna come in and chat with me, which I don't mind um, if they do that. But I do like to get some work done during these um, office hours. Sorry, I'm trying to turn this light off. It's not turning off. I do like to get work done during these um, office hours. So I've been telling the kids if they don't need help with anything or have questions that um, I will see them in the Google Meet the next day because I don't want kids just coming in and like hanging out and chatting with each other, which is what they like to do. So anyway, I'm gonna end this vlog here. Um, it's been a long day. Lots of helping kids get into Studies Weekly, which we practiced last week, so I think they just forgot. Um, but mostly everybody got logged in today, which is great news. I'm exhausted. And this went from being a weekly vlog to, I'm just gonna end it today because this is already like 20 minutes long. So I will keep you guys posted on the classroom decor changes, or not decor changes, electronic changes. I'm hoping, they said sometime this week is when our monitors will be coming in. So I'm hoping that they'll do the teachers who are teaching from school first. That way we can use them because there are not very many teachers teaching on campus. A lot of them are at home. And I just think it would be awesome if we could get first dibs on the new technology since we're here and we can actually use it. So. I'm gonna get going. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. 
If you're not already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can be alerted anytime that I post. Um, make sure that you're following me on Instagram at apples and tiaras to see more daily updates and to join me for my virtual teacher's lounge lunchtime with me. Today I had Darren, my very, very dear friend Darren, join me and it was a super blast. Um, Every day I want you guys to think about something that made your day sparkle, whether it was small, uh, big, even the smallest glisten can turn into a sparkle. So anything that was positive in your day, I want you guys to be thinking about those. Oop, time to pick up groceries. <laughs> and, um, ah! All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys!